in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed there is a way that seems right to a man and appears straight before him but the end of it is the way of death help us tonight in the name of jesus open our eyes to the things of the spirit empower us by light in the name of jesus christ hallelujah um i began to think and meditate on the things that I'll be sharing and the Lord began to reveal to me how that if we stay on course please listen if we stay on course with spiritual things and the things we are hearing the things we are listening to the Lord again began to give me an assurance that there is a height he's taking us in the spirit and that that height will not come in one day but that line upon line precept upon precept if we will be faithful enough to allow the light of god finish its work in our lives you know one of the things that we suffer a lot in the body of christ is impatience everyone say impatience we want everything to happen sharp sharp we want anointing sharp sharp we want insight sharp sharp we want to have all the revelations of the kingdom you want to listen to all the koinonia messages and receive all of the impartations at once you want all of the prosperity and the blessings to just come at once except for the fact that that's not how spiritual things work hallelujah god does not throw people up he lifts people and it's a process when he lifts you, he sustains you by knowledge. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So it's not just enough to be lifted. You will come down. But when he raises you up and then he keeps you in a place of stability, no power in existence can bring you down. Hallelujah. One of the things that I really thought about um I thought about a lot of things but one of them that struck a chord in my spirit and that will be the foundation of our teaching tonight i'll be very brief and then we'll pray you know over the last few weeks i've been challenging our convictions praise the lord those of us who have been consistent for a while you know that i have been probing our ideologies to examine the foundation of the things that we believe and why we believe them transformation is a product of replacing your old ideologies with another that is new that is sustainable and is able to take you to the place where god wants you to go it's not enough that we have a prophetic destiny in christ it's not even enough that we know that we have a prophetic destiny in christ like the lovely lady there shared that she knew that there was a place there was a a prophetic destiny for her life but knowing it brothers and sisters is not enough you must know how to get there and what it takes to get there and then you must commit yourself and this is one of the major problems with the body of christ we teach a lot about where we are going and where god is taking us and the fact that there are many prophetic things reserved for us and that is not a lie except for the fact that if believers are not equipped and shown how to live where they are 
to that prophetic destiny, they will be frustrated with time. The Bible says hope that is deferred can make the heart weary. Hallelujah. And so our job in this place is not only to reveal to you that there is a prophetic destiny for every single one of us in Christ. That there is an agenda of the spirit. That there is an intention in the heart of God for the nations and for us as individuals but to guide us through the spiritual principles that will transit and transform us to that plane and if you subject yourself to these teachings listen to me listen to me if you subject yourself to the truths you are receiving here and you open up yourself wholly wholly the bible says how that joshua followed the lord wholly is it Caleb? The Lord holy, not half-hearted. There are many of us who um, we love the Lord, but we are not really convinced about spiritual things. Hallelujah. So our perception about spiritual things are just on the average. You are not extreme. You are not fanatic enough about your belief of spiritual things. So you can bend when you hear anything else but the bible says be steadfast be immovable hallelujah you must be rooted in something listen let me tell you something if you ever hear a teaching here and you doubt its reality then don't keep quiet about it probe what you've heard and if you think it is not consistent with the word of god throw it away do not entertain anything in your heart you do not believe. Hallelujah. There are many of us that have believed the teachings of men of God for the purpose of solidarity. Not because it is a revelation we plan to apply. Hallelujah. Probably there are many of us that believe some of the things that we share in this place. Simply because you are a worker and you have to believe it. Is that true? If you were left all to yourself, you would not agree with some of those things. Why deceive yourself? Kick away anything your spirit does not agree with. And you must embrace something that is strong enough for you to be audacious about. Are you getting my point? There is no point standing for nothing. If you don't believe in prosperity, don't behave and pretend like you believe it probe its reality until you are convicted for or against it if you do not believe in the anointing and the ministry of the holy spirit see it's a dangerous thing to follow the crowd whereas your conviction about that reality is not strong because in the end of it you will not get any results are, are you hearing what i'm saying very important so it's not enough to sit under this anointing and listen to the word of God. The question is, are you convinced that the truths that are brought are true enough for you to believe? And hold on to that in the secret place where no one is watching you, you know that this is still my conviction. Hallelujah. I say this because there are many of us in the past, maybe three, four, five years, your spiritual life has not been stable. It's been a journey like a pendulum. Right now you're even confused and you don't know what you believe again. I heard a lady send me a text and said, honestly, since I graduated, let me tell you sincerely, I went to a church and I'm serving under that church and I've sat under that teaching for three, two, three months or thereabout and right now I don't even know what I should believe again. If that becomes your testimony, you will be angry in the future because your lot will be the same as those who never knew the truth in the first place. There are certain things you must be able to believe that you can hold and know that I will die believing this truth. The terrorists we have in this country, they are convinced about an ideology and as ambitious and unrealistic, as barbaric and sarcastic as those ideologies are, they sit down and they believe that the ideologies will come to pass. And they run. People give towards those ideologies. 
people give their lives towards those ideologies what do you believe what can you stand for about god about your life about your destiny are you seeing the reason why many of us never experience the reality of god's life we just hop around anything that looks like the truth so you travel back home and you hear something else and then you stop praying in tongues and you say this thing based on what i've had now i'm not really sure it doesn't make sense let me stop and then you come back and you are refired and then you are praying and then tomorrow is easy for you to bribe and then later on you say Kai, i need to repent where do you stand See, the Bible says, I wish that thou art hot or cold. You are neither hot nor cold. You are lukewarm. He said, as a result, I will spew you out of my mouth. You must stand for something. You must stand for an ideology. You must stand for a dimension of truth. It's like marriage. You cannot marry every woman. Is that true? You cannot marry every man. So you see a pretty lady right now and say, ah, ah, where have you been? If I saw you, I would not ask Rose out. And then the next thing you see another person and say, you see, that's how many of us are. There is a lot of spiritual harlotry. And at the end of it, we are infected with all kinds of viruses. Nothing stands. So you used to pray and fast, but you had something. And right now, you don't even see a need for it again. Then you hear another message and you are now confused. So, believers are swinging like pendulums. If your life must move forward, you must be able to convince yourself by the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Listen, let me tell you something. I have seen people who have had the privilege to be changed and transformed by now in their lives. And I am shocked to see that nothing has moved in their lives. Are you getting my point? When we began to pursue the things of God years ago, some of these people were also seemingly committed to the things of God. But right now, the equation is still zero. They have not been able to stand for something true. There are pastors today that you cannot write a theme about their ministry. You don't even know what to call of the ministry. So, within two weeks, they say we are a healing ministry. And later on, they hear another hot message and they say, our focus now is holiness. And then later on, they say, our people cannot be poor and, 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 and make heaven. So, we are focused. Where do you stand? Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And many of us have been victims like that. You've had to throw away certain notebooks and jottings that you did. Because you had something that made them useless. And now you are looking for it. You cannot find it. Because what you have held on to is not working. Listen. We are going to pray in one minute. And you are going to pray and say, Lord, let me not pretend this thing. Help me to stand for something real. Help me to stand for something true. Lift your voice and pray inside and outside. Pray for one minute. I am communicating to us a burden of the spirit. You must stand for something that you know that you are convinced about. Do you believe in divine health? Is it a reality to you? Do you believe in the supernatural power of God? What has changed in the last two weeks about what you believe? Was it supposed to change? What has not changed about your life? Why has it not changed? Go ahead and pray. Lord, I refuse to be hot today and cold tomorrow. I refuse to doubt my convictions. I remain immovable. I remain steadfast. Pray. This is why many of us never experience spiritual progress. We hold on to truths today. And we throw them again tomorrow only to repeat the journey of our lives there are things i will never believe i will never believe them there are things i will never stop believing 
there are things I'm open to change about because there are higher heights there are things I have found that are true go ahead and pray what have you found ask the Lord to probe the foundations of your ideologies there's no need pretending it it's possible that you're here yet you do not believe in things like the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet you do not even believe in the supernatural power of God it is a dangerous thing to be in a place it is a dangerous thing to be in a place just for the ceremony of it proximity is not the same as connectivity that you are close to an anointing that you are close to a revelation does not mean it will become part of your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many of us that are very ashamed about what we believe we cannot stand in the public because we are ashamed of the the stigmatizations and the mockery probably or the loneliness that such revelations can bring into our lives that you are ashamed to tell people that you made a commitment that no man will sleep with you until you are married and that commitment you are so ashamed of it is that true to an extent that when you hear people talking and they say how about you so who is for this weekend you just laugh and then you feel to say no 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 i i this is not my ideology it is so embarrassing because you are ashamed of the persecution that can come hallelujah every great man is fanatic about something and if you must ever experience greatness especially in the spirit you must have something you are convinced about and you must allow the Holy Spirit to probe your convictions very interesting scripture the Bible says can we have that scripture again There is a way that what? Seems right. Seems right. Unto a man. And appears straight. The road is not straight. <laughs> but based on what the man is seeing. It is a straight road. Hallelujah. Like a drunkard. When a drunkard takes. Eight bottles of beer. He can see this door. Right here. Is that true? Based on his perspective, the door is here. And he will go convincingly. Now, whether or not he's right will be shown shortly. Praise the Lord. He can see a gutter. And according to what his eyes is seeing, he's seen a staircase. Right? And he reaches to that gutter. And with every sense of conviction, he will attempt to climb only to find out that the light he saw was darkness. Now the Bible says that there is a way that seems right. Many people have different ideas in the body of Christ, in the secular environment, across our territories. We have our ideas about the path to success. We have our ideas about the way to know God more. Is that true? We have our ideas about ministry. How it should be. We have our ideas about marriage. We have our ideas about prosperity. We have our ideas about the will of God. About rapture. About the coming of Christ. About Satan. So we live in a society where we have ideas. In the body of Christ, for instance, we have different ideas about God. Different ideas about the realities of the kingdom. And these different ideas and perspectives have shaped our doctrines and our convictions. Hallelujah. In the secular environment, we have different ideas about jobs, about our work, 
there are those who believe that walking is an insult is that true there are those who believe if you are not walking you are not yet a man or a woman you are still a child we have all kinds of ideologies but the bible says there is what a way it seems right unto a man but in the end look at it the dangerous part of it is that it is in the end that you will know whether you are right or wrong you see why it is dangerous imagine brothers and sisters that you took a 10 hour journey or 12 hour journey to lagos and you followed a wrong road and after 12 hours you meet a, a military man on the road and he says where are you really going and he says sir the truth is lagos he said ah you are at the other side of this nation so it will take you at least 24 hours 12 hours to retrace your step back to the beginning and hope you don't make another mistake are you getting what i'm saying everything looks the same it is time that shows what is true and what is false when you plant a crop both the grass and the real plant all look the same in most cases but when you allow time it will show the difference all of us right now are here we can jump i am successful oh the holy spirit is working with me the life of god is in me i'm committed to the kingdom i'm an ambassador we are all speaking the same thing but time will prove those whose convictions are sincere genuine and solid and those who are just following the crowd in the name of meetings or koinonia or ministry there is a way one of the things that intrigued me i i remember then when i was in secondary school you know we wanted to make it so much every subject that we had to study we took it very seriously and um, I did fine arts and one of the things that that surprised me very much in fine arts was a topic that our art teacher taught us called perspectives right perspectives it was a very interesting subject for me because when we were being taught that um, lesson. We were taught that there are many ways of seeing the same thing. Is that true? And they called it what? Perspectives. So when we were given assignments, they will tell us from so, so, so perspective, draw this building. Praise the Lord. There were certain informations that if you stood from that perspective, they must be represented in your drawing. Is that true? And I enjoyed it so much. But then I got to find out that that mindset was not just in fine art alone. But that it was a revelation that was applicable in life. Perspectives. Everyone say perspectives. That it matters your interpretation of life and everything around you is dependent on the perspective you are seeing things from are you getting my point now if we ask an artist to stand on one side of this building and draw outside we may just think that koinonia is a meeting that occurs outside is that true based on what the artist is drawing that was the information that his eyes could pick he may never have the opportunity to draw that there is a feedback here and then when we ask someone to stand from this viewpoint and draw it my goodness you would think koinonia is being held in a stadium perspectives so it is possible please listen to me that a man can stand from a plane and see life and believe that that is all there is to life are you getting my point and be so convinced about your perspective that you will argue with any other person that is seen from any other perspective it's one of the biggest problems with the body of christ and so 
a man of God can stand from one perspective and look at life and all he sees is prosperity and success and increase are you getting me and a good life and a great life and from his perspective that is all there is to the Christian experience are you getting me and then the Christians in places like Iraq and Iran and the Israelis will stand from a perspective and see that the life of faith is a commitment where you pledge your life and pledge your blood it can cost you your life this is their perspective are you getting what I'm saying and to them it may not interest them so much when you are teaching this guy here is teaching I have come that you may have life is that true and have life more abundantly I refuse to be sick I refuse to be poor whereas another person looking at the same truth from another perspective begins to speak and say for me to live is Christ and to die is gain if it will cost me my life so be it yet another person looks at it here and he sees ancestral causes and he sees yokes and bondages and based on his perspective he's seen that life is a serious warfare before you are born and until the day you get to heaven there is a fight and this is his perspective now the trouble starts hear me when we begin to believe that our perspectives about spiritual reality is the ultimate perspective you see where error begins to come in when we do not realize that the best that any man can be is an effective member of the body hallelujah and so i'm here this is the perspective i've seen and now i look at the person in iraq and i say this guy does not have faith if he had faith guns and bullets will not enter his body whereas there are all kinds of security men taking care of me here are you getting me i live in a house that is secured digitally and these guys here are speaking and say lord help these people not to be carnal let them not miss heaven let them know that heaven is more than tea and bread yet we are all supposed to be believers and then there are others watch this that this is not even the object they are looking at. They are looking at something else. Are you getting my point now? They are not even looking at the perfect law of liberty. They are looking at something entirely different. And from what they are seeing, they fish out all sorts of doctrines. So they are not even here. They are not even here. They are not even here. It's not different dimensions of the same truth. This is what the Bible calls another gospel. Are you getting my point? I marvel that ye are soon drawn into another gospel. And all of those people will come together under an umbrella called Christianity. We believe we are worshipping God. We believe there are all kinds of Christian sects, for instance, in this country. Is that not true? There are generally acceptable sects. There are controversial sects. There are other sects that people say, uh -uh, this one is not even an issue of controversy. For everybody, when they say, fill your form, Christian or non-Christian, you, you all strike Christian. And the Bible says, there is a way. Everybody said, there is a way. Now, the trouble is, everyone is being taught and fed by one or more of these avenues and it is important that you get to a point in your life this is why you find out have you seen a family where they have five members and all of them attend different ministries and different churches have you seen the commotion that happens there during things like fasting and prayer or or maybe christmas or new year or something Everyone comes with his perspective. Why are you spending 20,000 naira on clothes? Somebody said, because Jesus died for me. He didn't die to make me suffer. 
And the other person is saying, oh you, oh boy, who taught you this? And the other person is saying, continue. The day there's no food to eat, it, my doctrine will make sense. And this other person is now speaking and saying, you guys are not pressing into the things of God. You, you are religious. You, you are carnal. We are spiritual. We are always walking with angels. There is fasting and prayer. Are you not seeing that Jesus is coming soon? There is global evangelization. Souls must be one. You are talking about clothes. And all this confusion are happening in the same house. The Bible calls it a great house. But in a great house, there are what? Not only vessels. There are, there are many. They are all vessels. But the Bible says there are many vessels. And God did not hide it from us. He said some are unto honor. But some vessels, although they are vessels, the truth of the matter is that they are unto dishonor. He said they are vessels of clay. It starts from there. The first vessel is what? Clay. Vessels, but clay. Something made them that way. They have refused to transit. They believe that that clay is gold. And that is their conviction. But the Bible says there are vessels of wood. They have moved from that realm of clay to being wood. When fire comes, it can burn them and they can become ashes. But at least, they are vessels of wood. And then the Bible says there are vessels of silver. And then there are vessels of gold. Are you, not, are you seeing now that in the body of Christ, vessels are not the same? It is called a great house. The Bible gives us the parable of ten virgins. They are all virgins, meaning they have been spotless. Is that true? So it's not talking about believers and unbelievers. It was talking about people in the same fold. But he said five were wise. So it's possible to be a foolish virgin. Five were wise. And the other five were what? Foolish. What was the wisdom? Five took extra oil. The other five were complacent with what they did. They didn't press for more. And a time came when what they had was not sufficient enough to sustain them. Then the Bible talks about the prodigal son. He was not called the prodigal servant. He was called the prodigal son. So this was a family affair. Is that true? But still in the same family. The young man said, I'm tired. I want my inheritance. And they gave it to him. And he went out and landed with pigs. Hallelujah. And when he came back, the father received him. And the elder brother was angry and was about to make the same mistake. He said, I've been in this house. Not even one ram. They have not caught anything for me. And the father said, all that I have is yours. Is someone following me tonight? There is a way. I have, I have probed and I, I do this all the time. My convictions and my ideologies. It is going to be a catastrophic thing, brothers and sisters. If at the end of our journey, you suddenly find out that praying in tongues is really wrong. Imagine that at the end of your journey, then you find out that Jesus is truly not Lord though. Huh? For instance, you now say, Jesus, come down. Ah! Come down. You have cheated me. Come and explain to me. I didn't enjoy the world. I didn't do anything for you. I don't need to find out. But that's the level at which some of us are going right now. Because our convictions are not strong. We even get to a point where we say, How are we sure this Christianity thing is not a lie? Hallelujah. There is a way that seems right. It seems right. It seems accurate. It seems like the way. There are many books that have been written in the body of Christ. All trying to describe how to do ministry. All trying to describe how to be a success in life. All trying to describe how to walk in the anointing. Is that not true? Oh goodness. There are thousands and probably millions of books. That try to teach on the anointing. And there are many people who have read it. And truly entered the anointing. There are others who read it. And entered something else. 
there are others who read it and nothing happened lift your hands and say Lord reveal the truth to me please say it Lord reveal the truth to me Jesus said it this way I am the way not any prophet not any apostle not any teacher not any pastor I am the way you follow men you will follow a lot of things are you hearing what I'm saying if all you want to do in your life is to follow apostle Joshua Selman you are going to be in big trouble I am the way I am the truth in fact he puts it this way let every man man of God man of men politicians let every man be a liar but let God alone be true that means if you build your life hear me if you build your ministry around a man you are in for shock I've said this thing again and again and again This is even the secret of increase in ministry. If I be lifted up, I tell you, if you see any ministry that God is honoring with his presence, with signs and wonders, multiplied people and all of that, Jesus is being glorified in that ministry. If I be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. There is something you can hear that will make you a failure in life no matter how nice it sounds there is something you can hear no matter how ugly it sounds it will make you a wonder in life there is something you will hear that will add to your spiritual confusion in life there is something you hear that will truly bring you to a place of rest The Bible says be careful how you hear and tonight the Lord is bringing a word he said there is a way there is a way that seems right there are many of us who have held on to doctrines and teachings that we believe are true hallelujah we believe we are so convinced we've argued it that this is the truth Acts, please, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Let's read from verse 15. Let me show you something. A very interesting man in the Bible. Acts chapter 18. The Lord is talking to us tonight because we are men of destiny. Acts chapter 18. Let's start from verse 24. Verse 24. Look at this interesting story, brothers and sisters. Acts chapter 18, verse 24. Look up, please. And a certain Jew named what? Apollos, born at Alexandria. He was an eloquent man. So there is no doubt that he was eloquent. And mighty in what? Are you, is that in your Bible? That man was mighty, meaning he was a man of God. He came to Ephesus. And when, when you, for many of us who have read the book of Ephesians, you know that Ephesians theologically is said to contain the highest church truth. Ephesus is not where you come and talk jargons. Verse 26. Okay, 25 now. He said, this man was instructed in the way of the Lord. Hold on. That means somebody taught him something. Is that true? He was instructed in the way of the Lord. And he was being fervent in spirit. According to what he had been taught. He spake and taught diligently of the things of the Lord. What was the limitation? He knew only the baptism of John. So the entire scope of his eloquence. And his spiritual argument. As powerful as they were. They were only centered around the baptism of John. Was he a fake man of God? You see that 
your pastors, your leaders. There are many churches and ministries that we may think they are not seeing certain results maybe because they are not genuine. They are genuine. It's just that their perspectives. This guy was eloquent. All that he was taught, he got A1 in it. But getting A1 in one course or getting A in one course does not make you a graduate. Verse 26. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when now? One day he was in a meeting just like Koinonia. That's why, you see, brothers and sisters, it's part of the reason why I prepare and pray and fast because I realize that when I stand on this stage, it's a privileged position. Not everybody is daft spiritually. Pastors, never forget this. When you stand, there are times you're speaking and somebody is just looking. This is the situation. The guy had been called a great man like we men of God are. We just returned from a trip in Kogi and he was a great, great, great one. So according to that perspective, I met people there who came down on their knees. Joshua Selman, I've been wanting to see you. Finally, I get to see you. Yet, ha, ya, 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 ya. he says, Whom, when Aquila and Priscilla had, that means he stumbled into a meeting in a church when he was there to shine as usual on that fateful day. There were two strange men called Aquila and Priscilla. And they kept quiet. Worship team sang. And the guy wore suit. He came up. And he began to speak. When Aquila and Priscilla heard, they said, wow, this guy has great potentials, but there is so much you do not know. How do you feel when someone tells you that? Embarrassing, right? If you ever feel embarrassed, get set for stunted growth. Are you getting my point now? The Bible says when they had, what happened? They took him like a boy. Ha! Amazing. See, come. This is, this is Apollos. Smart guy. Turn. Sharp guy. This guy had been preaching. Divine healing is possible. Blah, 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 blah. And true, true. One headache got healed. One headache, this and that happened. And one day he entered a meeting where he saw Aquila and Priscilla. And while he was talking, you see the beautiful thing about them is they did not condemn him. Maybe if I was the one, I would have looked at him and said, look at what this guy is saying. You are just disturbing people. They appreciated his impact. If you ever let your revelation make you turn down on other people, you are not growing. You are a child. These guys understood so much. When they looked at him, the Bible says they took him. Everybody said they took him. They said, gentlemen, your message was powerful. We were so blessed. But if there is just a few things you add, you will be amazed. And then they carried him. And what happened? They expounded to him the way of God more. So it's not like the guy did not try. But there were areas of lapses areas of excesses areas where his eye had not seen when they took him what happened they expounded they said all right there is the baptism of john but did you know that pentecost happened the guy said no the person who taught me did not teach me that probably the person who taught him taught him as alpha maybe he was one of the scribes the scribes are the suspects in this teaching maybe they taught him and they said look moses is our father and this is all we have been taught. Follow me tonight. There is a very serious journey. Now let's look at what happened. Verse 27. Now the guy had become acquainted with the truth more perfectly. When he was disposed to pass through Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. Who when he was come, he helped them much which had believed through grace. How did he help them? Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews and publicly showing by scriptures that Jesus was the anointed. That part was not taught him. But when the guy had it, he became a wonder. Could it be that you can be better than the way you are now if only you open up your spirit to say there is more than what I have been taught? Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Who is God speaking to in this place tonight? Nobody is saying your pastor did not try. Don't let your revelation make you insult the people. Boy, could it be, brothers and sisters, that you were taught about spiritual growth, but you were not taught about the principles of wealth in the kingdom? And that other part you were not taught is punishing your Christian experience. And if you will open up yourself to embrace that dimension, you will find out that your Christian experience will become richer and more complete. What if you were taught that it is just all about success and prosperity and greatness and you have never come to a point where they taught you that the Christian race is a cross that you can carry and that there are times that you will need to stand alone. Are you hearing me? That there are times that if need be, you may have to die for your convictions. If you open your heart to that dimension, then you can enjoy the blessings of God. Buy all the flashy cars, buy great houses, but they never take your place because you know that you are a bond servant. Your Christian experience becomes more perfect. Are you getting me? What if you have been taught that the only devil you have is the devil in your mind? There is no real devil anywhere. There are no demons anywhere. Hmm. Is that true? What if you have been taught that the only reason why things are not working is because you don't have faith? And all of a sudden you hear a perspective that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and wickedness, rulers spiritual wickedness and you embrace the perspective you become a prosperous committed strong and vibrant Christian it makes your Christian experience richer are you hearing what I'm saying and it is for this cause Ephesians chapter 4 please verse 10 it is on account of this completion listen please That he that descended is the same also that ascended far from above the heavens. Verse 10, verse 11. And he gave some what? Apostles. And some. And some. And some. And some. Perspectives. He gave unto them. He engraced his body with gifts. Listen to me. Revealed perspectives to them. There are many apostles and prophets who cannot pastor a church. They can host a convention. They can lift wheelchairs. But they do not have the heart of a shepherd. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is a dimension that is resident within a pastor. In terms of office, not just name. I know we, we just have all the names mixed up. But I mean in terms of office. There are many apostles and prophets that are just after signs and wonders. Are you getting me? The ability to stay with a congregation and teach them, build them, make them equipped and relevant both to the kingdom and society is not there. If you want a miracle meeting where you come and in minutes wheelchairs are flying up, there are people like that. There are prophets who can come when you are confused in your life. Just locate them. You are not going to hear any revelation. I traveled somewhere and while I was there, it was, it was a, a, a conference and there were lots of prophets there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I was amazed to see how these guys, their understanding of the word was so little. You know how an ostrich is so big, but the brain is so tiny. Not, it's not an insult. I'm just saying that was how much their word capacity was. But my goodness, my goodness. These people, these people zeroed down the prophetic. It was almost prophecy but at will. I've had the opportunity to prophesy and speak over people. But I'm not called into the prophetic office. The grace to be able to prophesy is the privilege that the scope of the apostolic ministry affords you. 
So for me, I know that to prophesy, it must happen with fasting and prayer. It's not a gift for me. I don't look at you now and say, except I'm lying. You see that? If it's to tell a lie, it's a very simple thing. I can just say you. There are things going wrong with your life, of course. That's a very easy way to lie. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if ever the prophetic gift must be activated in me, it's on the strength of much prayer and fasting and my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. It's not a luxury for me. That's why the few times it comes, I cherish it sincerely. He gave unto some apostles. He gave unto some prophets. He gave unto some evangelists. He gave unto some pastors. He gave unto some teachers. So that the, the full picture, verse 12. Why did he give all these things? For what? The Bible says Apollos was shown the way of the kingdom more perfectly. And the Bible says these diversities are given for the perfecting of the saints, comma, so that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry to the end that, verse 13, till we come into the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man and unto the measure of the stature. Let me tell you something. Every man of God that truly knows God knows that the best he can deliver is only a dimension of God. And he's not embarrassed by that reality. That's why I get you never, there are some things you never hear in Koinonia here. Oh God of Koinonia. Oh God of Joshua Selman, arise for me. I'm not saying ministries that say God of this, God of that, there's, there's anything wrong. I'm just saying that if you, if you don't take care, that turns from becoming calling upon the name of the Lord to idolatry. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are believers in the body of Christ today. They have seen the truth. They have seen it. They know that this is truth. But their commitment towards the perspectives they have had will never afford them the opportunity like Apollos to be humble. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right. It's amazing that there are still Christians today that believe that only based on their fasting and prayer and growing up spiritually, they will have enough money to fund a ministry. They will have enough money to fund TV programs, buy buses, buy all of this and carry the gospel. That's the perspective they've been trained. They have it that way. And they have refused to embrace the ministry of people like Kenneth Copeland, Bishop Oyedeko, and who again? Dr. Mike Mudok and all of these people. Gifts in the body of Christ that reveal the wisdom of God. They have rejected the ministry. The trouble is, the Bible says at the end, let's have that scripture again, at the end, it will tell on you. There are ministries, for instance, who love God, but they have no desire for excellence. In fact, their interpretation of excellence is carnality. Is that true? You ever buy a suit that fits you, you are of the world. They don't know that, oh, you can buy a good shirt size. So the man of God does not care. And then you don't know why they are rejecting your programs on air. You go on, you say, okay, let me go on. Maybe Dunamis TV, the people don't listen. Let me go on this, let me go on that. Any television station, they throw you away. Correct gospel, but you have forgotten that there are all kinds of people who are watching you. Is that true? What perspective about God have you rejected? Bless you. What perspective about the truth of God's word have you rejected? There are people today, for instance, who will never listen to Bishop David Oedeko's teachings. Never ever. There are people today who will never listen to Papa Adeboe's message. As great as he is, they just look and say, this is basic. I'm looking for strong meat, not milk. Are you getting that now? Hmm. There are people who never listen to Olukoya's message, for instance. Dr. Olukoya 
Say, I'm, I'm not ready for all of these things. There are many people who will never listen to W.F. Kumuyi's message. Say, please, it doesn't matter. I don't want this. There are many people who will never listen to maybe Samadayemi's message. Say, please, I'm not a businessman. This earth, we have, we have come for serious. There are, there are, there are yokes to break. The dimension you probably may be neglecting is the area that has stopped you from being perfected. And so occasionally, God grants us access. There are people who have rejected the ministry of prophets. Is that true? The moment you are called prophet, Femi, or whatever, <laughs> people just say prophet, what? even if it's your brother, they just say, no way. I hate prophets. Prophets are of the devil. They are liars. It's not all about this and that. And the guy is confused. For three years, a decision that can be revealed to him in five minutes. Are you getting my point? The guy is confused. Ministry is not working. Nothing is working and he does not know what is wrong. Occasionally, he may go for meetings where he will see other great prophets. What is the Lord saying? No, 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 no. There are people who hate the apostolic ministry because they think that it's all about manifestation. I used to be criticized years ago and it was so much. You know, then, now I've grown. Praise God. Now I, I sleep over those things. Then it used to bother me. People say, is it all about manifestation? Eh? Can't you teach a quiet word and people share the grace and get up and go? Must people fall around? Eh? God is a God of order. What is all this disorderliness in the body of Christ? And <laughs> for me, it was a very serious thing. And they were good people. Very genuine, very good people. And it bothered me. I said, oh Lord, to stop this. Stop it. Huh? Stop it. Let me even stay in one place and just mind my business and share. And then I would prepare a nice message and come and I would not even use it. He gave gifts in the body for the corporate perfecting. Listen, if you believe that your church or your ministry or koinonia will reveal the full span and the full scope of all that God is, let me tell you, you are already in error. Are you getting my point? You are already in big error. That is already the spirit of error. No matter how great koinonia is, the advantage of the apostolic ministry is because of the administrative nature of that spirit, you float between graces so that you can supervise the, the, the accurate dispensing of those graces. So God affords you the opportunity to step into various offices like a master key. But even in that, it is not enough to be able to bring the perfection in the body of Christ. I know many great and anointed ministries, they cannot remember the last time an altar call was made in that ministry. A genuine altar call. Yet we criticize people like E.E. Adeboe that even if he ministers to only three of you, he must make an altar call. Baba will say, before we continue, I believe that there are some people here who need to rededicate their lives. Even if it is in their pastor's meeting. Pastors he ordained by himself. I don't trust what would have happened to you. So if there is need for fresh commitment, there are great ministries like that of the man of God, Billy Akoni, somewhere in Boko, in Benway. A pure teaching ministry. People come from all over the world and sit under that teaching anointing and get blessed. Billy Graham, it was said that there were no miracles in his crusades. If you carry a wheelchair, just comfort the person that he's going to heaven. Because when he came for Billy Graham's crusade, immediately Billy Graham, and he was, no, he was not sorry for it. It was never recorded that he fasted once and said, Lord, why, where is the power? It's not like he did not understand revival. He just knew that he was, well, I don't know. When we get to heaven, we'll find out the other side of that equation. I know the evangelistic ministry is supposed to be a charismatic ministry that comes with signs. 
and wonders. But for whatever reason, it did not happen yet. Stadiums were jammed with people. And they were harvests of genuine salvation. Many of these ministers today were products of his meeting. The question I have, this is not even really what I want to share tonight, but I just want to talk about it. What dimension of the kingdom have you rejected? There are many of us who have been taught, probably by our men of God. Don't listen to so 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 person's messages. Don't listen to so 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 person's tape. Throw it away. And you have done so to your own detriment. If it's a devotional and it's not written by my pastor, I won't read it. It was written by maybe one great man. He studied theology. He's a provost in a theological college. You say, and you just throw it. Whereas there was light you would have found there that would change your life forever. See, let me tell you, part of the knowledge that I have now was because of the advantage of the Anglican seminary. We were taught spiritual growth and we, we were taught a course called honesty, morality, and conscience. I will say it forever. I'm a product, apparently, God knew that he had called me into the apostolic ministry and he gave me the dimension, the, the opportunity to touch many ministries. I've taught many ministries. See that? In the seminary, it was where I learned genuine morality. When they tell you morality, see, this is how we were trained. Come. Let's save time because I really want to talk about something else. Listen. The way we were trained, huh? hear me, if I offend this brother, I, it doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. Even if it is in the main road. You will kneel down. Kneel down. I will lay my hands on you. And ask the Lord to forgive you. And then stand up. I will kneel down too. <laughs> yes. It doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong. You will lay your hands. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You will lay your hands on me and you ask the Lord to forgive me. It doesn't matter what the case is, it, it has died. We were taught that if you buy maybe chinching or puff puff or something on the street, no matter how hungry you are, even if you are dying, you must find the nearest place, enclosed place and sit down with dignity and eat like a human being, not an animal. That's how we were trained. Listen to me. I didn't receive they did not teach us on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But brothers and sisters, part of these virtues, are you getting me, is what has kept us to be disciplined today. Oh, they didn't tolerate nonsense. My goodness. If meeting, if you are supposed to pray from so, so, so time, I remember then we had to cram the Apostles' Creed. So long as your father brought you there, you must learn it. Whatever you believe is your cup of tea. Whether you're a Christian, you're a non-Christian, we have to learn it. And then the man, that was my first experience with, you know, writing and documenting um, teachings that some, I, I sit down with God and I write something. He prepared a quiet time manual by himself. And we were all considering the same book. So if they ask you, where are we? You say, Acts 16, they know you have not been you have not been following because if you are following we are supposed to be in Acts chapter 14. How did you get to 16? Meaning you just guessed. And your punishment for that whole day is you are going to study the word of God and you are going to cram a lot of scriptures. Are you getting my point? We had one scripture per month that we, this memory you see is not just that okay the Holy Ghost hands came on me. I'm sorry to say it. But if I were born and bred a Pentecostal, pure Pentecostal, maybe I would have been a tout by now. I say it with all humility. Because we came through backgrounds that forced us. Are you getting my point? You don't come home past six or past seven and just bounce. You know they will ask you a question. My father said, if you are under my roof and I'm the one responsible for the food you must abide by the rules. If you think you are old enough 
prove it by going to build your own house. And then you can live as lawless as you want to. Thank God for such parents. Some of us who are planning to be light-hearted at our children, slap me when you want to. You, you will see what they will become. Brothers and sisters, we were trained in that environment. We used to wear cassock. That was our Sunday wear. Real cassock. And we went like angels. When it was time for evangelism, we, we felt godly. We felt holy. It kept us. You use a vulgar word they are calling your parents. We thought he was playing. He did it many times. You use a vulgar word, all these rubbish words. No. You are going home. Time for inspection. You don't wash well and iron your clothes. They taught us what we know as oral English, but the American version, you understand what I'm saying? Fonair. Oh yeah, let me use that word. Yes, we were taught. We were taught. Because they didn't trust the way we were all speaking. Everybody was coming with all kinds of accent from everywhere. And they said, look, we'll teach you a central way of speaking smart. Don't come with whatever kind of, drop it and speak good English. And then we were taught cursive writing. We would be studying, brothers and sisters, it was a small school. And the principal will play worship songs. That was my first encounter with Darling Jack. As we're busy studying, there's powerful worship saturating everywhere. That's how we had the privilege to be trained and molded properly. Praise God. If somebody comes to the school and blesses you with anything, no matter how old you think you are, you must tell the principal about it. That on behalf of the school, they gave you 100 naira and you just said thank you and you just took it. No way. No way. Listen, listen, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm talking about perspectives of God. Are you getting my point? This was a great perspective of God. Then this was how we used to greet. Good morning, sir. That's how you greet. Look, all this, I'm not... You go home straight there. You are, you are leaving. It's not an issue of call. You know how the Bible says it. Rebuke one, then call another. You are going home from the first day. Yeah. You would have to. Anybody, oh, not just those who are older than you. If you are to greet now, you will bend down and greet. No matter how tall you are. Not, not bend down like this. No. Bend down very well. Take your time. And then if you did something wrong, before they flog you, they will tell you the offense and what the Bible says about what you have done. Don't think the, the biblical statement will exempt the flogging. When they finish, they will tell you on account of this and in view of what I've explained to you, do you now see that this flogging is necessitated? I'm serious. I am very, very serious. Koinonia plans to have a school in the future. This is the exact curriculum. Be happy to bring your children. I guarantee you. Yes. Yes. We observed siesta. Whether you want to sleep or not. They brought a medical doctor who taught us the benefits. Once it's time, go and if you cannot, you have to lie down. Said it's good for your body. What have you learned? What have you learned? What perspective have you rejected? I don't know where that man is. I only encountered him for one year. But my plan, in fact, I still plan, I planned it this year, but that I was going to look for him anywhere. I'm waiting. The, the gift I wanted to buy is too small. I want to maybe something like buy a car. Eh? Or build a house. This is the kind of gift you give a man for molding your life like that. We were taught to say thank you. You don't say thank you, they will whip the devil out of you. Even if it is your right, you don't say thank you, they will whip you. You are rebellious, you will go home with a letter typed. 
And the reason is that you are being a hindrance to the spiritual progress of other people. <laughs> Have you ever seen a man that strict and yet so loving? We were taught that a woman who is not your wife, if you don't take care, is dangerous. We were taught that. So all this mindset people had, all this boyfriend and girlfriend thing, people, I never got into those things. We were advised from day one, Jesus is coming. There is heaven, there is hell. They listed all the people that will not make heaven. And they told, I'm serious about it. They told us very seriously. Sex before marriage is wrong. Say it. And we said it and it entered our brains. If you see a lady aside from brotherly love and kindness, it ends there. Any spirit suggesting any other thing, you drive it far from you. The question I'm asking you is, what perspective have you not been taught that has, has, has refused perfection from finding expression? There are probably some of us, bless you, who you grew up under a man who loved God and loved women dangerously. God and women occupy almost the same position. Is that true? I love God, though. But these sons of, these daughters of Israel, daughters of Zion, and that mindset rubbed off on some of us. We are loving God but you find out that it's like a cancer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Like a cancer. is still eating us. You love God, but that women dimension, so God cannot commit a great ministry to you. When I traveled, they told me about a great prophet of God. Mighty prophet. I had the opportunity to see that guy. Very short guy. My goodness. Look. That guy solved the spiritual calculus of prophecy. Ah! No, no. See, what the things you see on TV, I tell you, is kindergarten. I saw prophecy plus plus. But, another man of God that I stayed with began to talk to me. And he said, there is just one limitation to this man's life. Women. As prophetic as he is, he will never be able to pick from the vistas of his sp the spirit when Jezebel is coming. Women. Probably, I tell you the truth, that guy has not been exposed to certain teachings. See, it's not about the words. It's the impartation and the perspective it tilts your spirit to. There are many of us who have probably never had a message on sin. S-I-N. It's even sounding strange to some of us now. Never had a message on sin. And if you see a tape, sin, just throw it and say, God forbid. This is not for me. Just listen. No, God forbid. You're ever on your television set and you see men of God like W.F. Kumu. You say, change that channel, please. Change it very quickly. We are, we are trying to grow. We don't want anybody to... You see that? And... We endorse it as spiritual maturity. I am telling you tonight, if we are not careful, the church will lose on so many perspectives. Praise the Lord. I remember I went to minister, I think it was with Ike, we traveled two years or so ago. While we were ministering, I didn't know that the church hates music like this going on when you are preaching. You know, to be setting the atmosphere. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. The man of God said, you know, he wanted to come and introduce me and I think Ike also had started playing the keyboard. The man said, when I'm on stage, everywhere be becomes silent because the word of God is about to come. And I said, Lord, <laughs> how are we going to do this now? I don't know how God did it that day. But God still glorified himself. Everybody say perspectives. Say perspectives. You need to open yourself to other perspectives that are available in the body. Now, please let me balance something. Look at me. 
as a pastor, you are responsible for the primary spiritual feeding of your people. Pastor there does not just mean pastoral office. As a shepherd or a leader. Are you getting my point? You cannot allow your sheep to just be victims of any doctrine and any theology. It is irresponsible. It's the same thing as having children and leaving your gate open. And you see one man coming to talk to your daughter. You say, when you are, free, when you are done, please come inside. One day you won't see her again. She has run away based on what the person was telling her. Is that true? But at the same time, there is this attitude I've seen in the body of Christ that needs correction. This ownership attitude. Have you seen that kind of thing? It's dangerous. If you're a pastor here or a man of God in ministry and you are involved in it, stop it. This overprotection of people. Where did you go to? I went for a conference. Where? In Ibadan. Which man of God did you go to listen to? So you are trying to say what I'm giving you is not enough. It's called insecurity. It's called insecurity. So we men of God sometimes have stopped believers from receiving other dimensions that are resident in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Where are you going? I'm going for a dance, a dance program. There are some ladies that are into dancing. They love God. What kind of dance? Dance where? In the church? You are going to watch dance. This is how all of you have become corrupt. Whereas, these people have been fasting and praying for days. And say, Lord, through this ministry, affect somebody. So you carry that mindset that everybody you see dancing is a devil. Yet, David danced. Yet, it was because Herod's daughter danced that the head of John the Baptist went. Are you following what I'm saying? I will never, I have made this vow under God, I will never rob any one of us of the opportunity to hear the truth. For those of us in school of ministry, you know how many videos we have watched so far from different gifts in the body representing different perspectives. There are dimensions God did not give me. I will never try to struggle. It's amazing. It's amazing, brothers and sisters. There are people in this city because of doctrinal issues, they may never come for miracle service to be healed. If it is not my man of God that prays for me to be healed, i rather die like that. Have you seen people like that? Oh, how sad. Shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. Everybody say kingdom. kingdom. Shout it, kingdom. kingdom. This is the mindset you must have as a believer. Not just church. Maintain your loyalty and sincerity because you must be committed and planted. They that are planted in the house of God. You should become the greatest fanatic over the work that God has given you and the ministry he has given you to serve. However, realize this, that there are different perspectives. The question you have been asking for years, God has anointed a man to answer it. You have refused to listen. There are people who criticize me today and will never listen to my teachings. They have seen me in dreams laying hands on them. They got up in the morning and casted me away. And they are sitting and their families are dying. Probably some of you are like that even as you are standing right now. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. You must embrace what the spirit of God is doing in the body of Christ. And the way you do that is by celebrating what he's doing across the, the life. See, let me tell you. If you find yourself being initiated into this ministry of criticism to see somebody like our daddy now and then you begin to talk against him and criticize him and say a lot of things in a bid to prove spirituality, I'm telling you the diagnosis, you are a child. Hallelujah. 
I've had the opportunity to hear young people like myself preach. And I've been amazed at the arrogance which we they spoke with. It scared me. Scared me in a way that I said, ah! And then it's amazing because in all sincerity, some of these ministries, it's not even maybe membership. No, it's not membership. It's not prosperity. It's not even healing. It's not even demonstration of the anointing. You are average in everything, yet you are standing audaciously to talk about people. If you are involved in that, hear me now. Repent. There is a way. It seems right to you, but God is speaking to you that the end thereof are the ways of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are many of you, you have criticized prayer ministries. You see people praying and you look and say, it's not all about prayer, 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 prayer. Shut up. You are speaking based on the perspective you have seen. You see believers gather around and they are praying and you are speaking. Castigating people. Say it's not all about prayer, it's all about the word of God. Could it be that there is something you are not seeing? There are others who look at ministers that are calm. Maybe people like Samadeh and me and the rest. And you just feel, these guys are not as hot as I want. What authority do you have? What result has your life produced to earn you the right? See, Archbishop Benson Idahosa said something. He said, never talk about a man of God until you have done twice what he has done. I hear ministers criticize crowd. And they say it's not about crowd. They are talking to 12 people. If you are so anointed, does God not want your voice to be heard? We are going to the nations. Where are the nations? He said they are coming. You are failing on a principle. Hmm. There are lots of ministries. People will come and sit down and they are sweating. Heat is killing them. But the word of God is coming. It's not because fans are not available. It's not because they've stopped selling AC. Limitations. There are many ministries who have people who are so rich, but the devil is destroying their lives. There are all kinds of scandals from one scandal to another, but they will not tap into the true spirit of holiness. Open our eyes. See, you must diligently open yourself to the perspective that you see lacking in your spiritual life. Are you getting my point? If you find out that you are not prayerful, go and get messages of Archbishop Duncan Williams. Let him impart this. It will come. Oh yes. It will land on you for sure. You find out that there is lack of excellence in your life. Go and look for messages by people like Matthew Ashimolo or Sama Deemi and add that touch of excellence to your spirituality. You think you're a lazy man of God. You quote every scripture wrongly but the power of God still moves. You are theologically wrong. Your presentation on stage is wrong. You know nothing about homiletics. You do not have the accurate understanding of the presentation of the gospel. Go and find some of the pastors in our orthodox churches that spent decades in Bible schools getting masters and PhD and sit down. Let them tell you a little about church history. Let them tell you a little about homiletics. Let it add to what you have. They may not be able to heal your sick body, but they can add a touch that will take your ministry to the next level. Is somebody hearing what God is saying? Don't sit down there tied up and say, it has to be this way. It is my way. The jawbone of an ass has never been a weapon of war. Has it ever been a weapon of war? Never. But when situation came, he was able to discern Samson now and he used the jawbone of an ass. If he was waiting for a knife, he would have died there. Who told you knife is the only weapon they use for war? Have you found out that there is a God who can put power upon the jawbone of an ass? That's why there are many of you, once you see the anointing oil, or maybe you see somebody come with water like this and say, please, 
pray on it for me. Now I say, now nah, these are doctrines of demons. Who told you? Who told you is a doctrine of demons? Is it what you were taught? Or is it what God revealed to you? Somebody now comes and says, I see an angel. He says, witchcraft. God never does. It is through the word. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Matthew 15. This is our time. Always flies. Did you know I've not even touched what I want to teach tonight? Well, we'll just pray. Even if we pray from here, at least you got something. Matthew 15. Verse 1. Matthew 15. Please let's hurry up. Matthew 15. And Jesus came to the scribes and the Pharisees which were of Jerusalem. Then came to Jesus, sorry, scribes and Pharisees which were of Jerusalem, saying, verse 2, let's hurry up, just keep running it like that. Why do your disciples tra transgress what? Question, what is the tradition of the elders? Why do your disciples do things differently? They are introducing a perspective we are not used to. We have a tradition. A way things are done. We don't believe in the laying on of hands. We don't believe that the power of God can come under someone. Why do your disciples transgress the traditions of men? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Next verse. But he answered and said... Why do ye also transgress what? By God is asking you a question. Which will you choose to uphold? To transgress the traditions of men. You are in a place and the Lord is asking you. Lay hands on this sick body. And you say no Kai. I'm not, I'm not used to it. I'm not saying go and be a rebel in your church. That's not what I'm saying. But you are in your house. They've never seen the laying on of hands and God is saying, go ahead and do it. If you don't lay hands and rebuke the spirit of death, someone will die. And you transgress, please let's go back, you transgress the commandment of God so that you will keep your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, honor thy father and mother and he that cursed father and mother, let him die the death. Next verse. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Verse 6. And honor not his father and his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect. You can make the power of God, the word of God, the reality of spiritual things of none effect by tradition. Would you rather pray in tongues or be accepted among your friends who have said there's, there's nothing. Praying in tongues is just jargon. It's just rubbish. But something in your spirit tells you there is a higher spiritual experience. It may not be your fault. You were not taught. But now that you have heard the word, it puts pressure on you to make a decision. Whether or not to embrace that which is spiritual or remain in the traditions of men. Change is one thing that people hardly subscribe to. It's a difficult thing to change because we love things happening as usual. We love things happening normally. Let it be happening the way I have always known it. And the moment I see another perspective, then it is not of God. It is based on this that the ministry of what we call criticisms and all of that stem up. It is not done this way. It is not done this way. I've even had 
preachers who preach that putting a stage, putting a little place like this to honor the man of God and guests is carnal. Everybody's one before God. And in those churches, when the pastor comes, he can sit anywhere. Once it's time for someone, he can come out. It is lack of excellence. Yet, it may not be embraced as thus. It may be termed spirituality. God is speaking to you. Could it be that if you embrace a dimension of God, you would have passed the interview? You entered the interview as a man of God, not as an employable person. Praise the Lord. You didn't dress well because you felt the Holy Ghost is with me. And you entered. The people were looking at you. And young man keep quiet i can't keep quiet this is what i believe because you were not taught the principles of excellence you called it spirituality but you've lost your job because of it you were not taught diligence that a christian is also an agent of national transformation and time to walk in the office you are fasting and praying and you are not doing anything you left your job undone when it was time to promote you you saw yourself being promoted in the spirit Physically, they demoted you because you are not adding to the advancement of the group. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And there are people who just sit down and feel, I know all the principles. I know the principles of business expertise. I understand the psychology of communication until somebody fires an arrow from your village and you wake up and one leg cannot move and that's the day you are supposed to report to be promoted then you know that there is more to life than psychology and philosophy I'm telling you the truth when Satan comes he finds the dimension you have ignored in God that becomes his access point in your life so there are anointed but broke believers there are broke there are rich but carnal believers who are going to hell. There are anointed believers with no character. Because they've been taught it's all about the anointing. Once the anointing is in the building, people must come. So you can be sleeping around. You are anointed. And you know, we convince ourselves that because you indulge yourself in all kinds of things. And you come back and see the hand of God. It convinces you that God is with you. You do not know that it is a dimension of God's mercy speaking to you. Samson said, I will arise as before. And all of a sudden he found out that his hair had gone. He said, you have been weighed, O king, in the balance. God weighs men. Oh. He won't weigh you in one day. He will keep weighing you. you will be. That's why you see a flourishing ministry will just dry up at once. Four years ago, this man was a great man everywhere. But now, the lampstand has been taken. Let me tell you, God can take away the candlestick of men and give others. Read your Bible. He took away the talent from the man who had one and gave another person. May God not take your position and give another. Saul was still in the palace. Whereas the mantle had left him. Many churches have been stunted. They are, they are at the verge of the next season of their lives. I was listening to a man of God and I had a revelation that blew my head. He was on YouTube. I don't even know him. Just, me, just getting for the first time. And this guy shared something that scattered my head. And it was at a season in my life where I needed that exact kind of wisdom. I used to struggle in my life trying to get approval from everybody. When I started out, every time people said things that were bad about me, I felt so bad. And I, I went out of my way to try to do everything to people. I could borrow money to give somebody else so that he would eat food with it. And run into problems I could go that far because people made me look like God sent you to us and then I listened to an apostle of wisdom dr. Mike Budok 
and he taught on certain mistakes he made when he started ministry he said never try to do to people what only god can do to them deliverance that was it i learned how to sleep soundly because i didn't used to sleep i said how can my sheep be awake and me i'm awake now <laughs> I read now that I am the good shepherd. That I am is Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, when it's time to walk, I walk. When it's time to sleep, I sleep. It is the keeper of Israel that does not sleep nor slumber. I am part of the fold of Israel. Are you seeing now? I probably, I don't know, maybe I would have died by now. That was part of the wisdom that made us to fix counseling session just once it was getting too much everybody would call at every time i became a receptionist hundreds of phone calls like every 30 minutes someone is calling and the person can cry for 50 i was wearing out literally and then the lord said why don't you put something like that some of you are in that thing right now you have you are owing everybody and you didn't do anything with the money because you want to be a good person visitors came to your house you went and borrowed ten thousand naira to buy them spaghetti you bought them books you went to jordan bookstore bought books i want you to be spiritual now you are in trouble and the people have turned their back and they are insulting you because you want a good name is someone learning something here there are many of us you are spiritual but if only you learned that it is part of wisdom to delay gratification until god blesses you take life easy no sharp 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 no i will embrace every dimension that is relevant for the purpose that god has anointed and brought me in the earth there are vessels there are dimensions in the spirit i want to be blessed and prosperous i don't want to be a struggling man of god i don't want koinonia to be a struggling ministry at the same time i don't want to be a carnal man of god i want to walk in true holiness and righteousness before the god of my salvation i want to walk spiritually aligned i want to be at the cutting edge of what god is doing I don't want to go out, be extinct spiritually because I do not sustain the present truth of what the Holy Spirit is communicating. And so I open myself in the spirit to all of the dimensions that are possible. This is what Koinonia is all about. Opening us up to the dimensions of the spirit that are available for us. Maybe we'll take it another time. I actually plan on talking about divine direction. Very, very important. Ah. Can I just run through what I wrote like a note? Will that be okay? Because I know that someone needs this message. Divine direction. I'll just read it like a lecture. I'm sorry about it, okay? We'll have time to look at it again. I love you too much. It's pinching me. I don't want... Us to just go like that i know that you've gotten something but i just want to be able to bring in what we have prayed and prepared to fulfill your assignment in life you need divine guidance oh this is very important you need divine guidance no man outgrows the need to be guided no man no matter how spiritual you are you can never outgrow the need to be guided by God only a fool in his heart will say there is no God confusion I wrote here is part of the limitation of mankind I was to share with us the need to seek spiritual direction divine direction in our lives divine direction very very important proverbs 16 verse 25 very quickly 16 verse 25 everybody say confusion look up please there are many of us right now 
that if a prophet, a genuine prophet of God, would enter here right now and have a one-on-one -on -one session with us and say, by the grace of God, I will talk with you one-on-one -on -one and let's hear what God has to say about your life. I guarantee you that even if it's a night vigil, many of us will wait because you say, Lord, you must speak to me. Many of our prayer requests during miracle service is not necessarily about sickness but about divine direction. Is that true? We want to be guided towards marriage. You want to know what is the next thing. Some of us are in ministry right now. You don't even know the next step. Some of us probably are finished. You want to know, am I still going to be in Zaria? Am I going to go somewhere? Is that the scripture? What did I say? Proverbs what? Oh, no, no. Psalm, sorry. Psalm 37 verse 23. I'm sorry. Psalm 37 verse 23. We need divine direction in our lives. You can see a great destiny, brothers and sisters. Listen to me, inside and outside. There are many of us right now. What you need to see the next dimension of your Christian experience. And to see the next dimension of your progress in life is divine direction. Let's read it. One to read. The steps of a good man are what? Ordered. The steps. The word good man, there is the word righteous man too. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Shout, order my steps. Say it, order my steps. God is speaking to us. Honestly, I wish I had time to walk this thing. Because I really came, that's the thing about passion. You keep talking and talking and there is almost no time. I really plan to teach seriously on this. Because many of us right now, we are in a straight betwixt. You are ready to enter a relationship but you need divine direction. You are ready to get married but you need divine direction. As a gentleman, you want to start putting structures to your life. But you need divine direction. And let me tell you something. It is terrible to be found in a place where God's anointing has not gone before you. You will suffer. You will struggle. Nothing will work. When you are in the geography, when you are in your assigned place, everything is commanded to work for you there. Why do we need divine direction? Our decisions in life are based on the information we have and our current level of exposure. This is one of the reasons why we need divine direction. Our decisions in life are usually based on the information we have and our current level of exposure, which many times is limited. I need divine direction because if God does not direct me, I can sit down and believe this is the prophetic destiny of koinonia i can look out and say wow there's a crowd inside and outside i'm comfortable i'm comfortable it's okay nothing more whereas god's idea god's mandate upon my life is the nations are you getting what i'm saying abraham had about 316 or so men but his prophetic destiny was the entire earth our decisions are limited. Our informations are limited. And we make decisions based on those informations. Let me tell you something. Your decisions and your perspective about life can be wrong. That's why you need divine direction. You need divine direction. Jesus said something very interesting. Um, in Luke chapter 11. Let's look at Luke chapter 11. From verse 34 to 36. Jesus was speaking about light. He said, be sure that your light is not darkness. That means you can be looking and you can be thinking that you are walking in illumination. Whereas you are walking in darkness. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, your body is also full of darkness. 35. There's a warning for us. Everyone read. Want to read. Take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. 
That means you can be making decisions based on a truth you think you know, whereas it's wrong. Hallelujah. For instance, I will never marry a man who is rich, who is not rich, for instance. I will never marry a broke man. I don't want to suffer. That's a light that you have. You think it is light. Whereas when you allow God to help you, you will see that it's darkness. What if you marry the rich man and he becomes poor two years after your marriage? As poor as you would have run away before the marriage. What is the same thing? Are you seeing that? I will only marry a, re a lady who can crime some 119. It's a mindset. You think it's light, whereas it is darkness. So, we make a lot of decisions in our lives. I will never get a job that gives me 20,000. There is a job for you to start out. You say, God forbid, I'm bigger than 20,000. If I cannot start with 250,000, except I'm not a Christian. Seven years, there's no job. The highest you have seen is 30,000. Whereas if you were faithful, one of your customers would have come and you would have left that place. It was the test of faithfulness. You've never held 50,000 of your own, yet you talk about 250,000 as if it's five naira. Mindsets. So, we need divine decisions that can be higher than what we would have decided for ourselves. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. We need divine direction because our perceptions about life can be wrong. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, I see the rod of an almond tree. Then said he, thou hast well seen. That means you can see wrongly. He said, for I will hasten my word that you have now seen. That means your speed in life is also based on your perception. You don't see wrongly, you will not move fast in life. But the Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Very quickly. What does it take to receive divine direction from God? I really feel sad. I'm just doing a lecture. I'm, I'm so sorry. Our time is gone. And I want us to pray. Number one. Requirements. To be divinely directed by God. Number one. You must admit that you are limited. You must admit. You must break your pride. And admit that you are limited. It is not. Listen. Listen. It's not an insult. Look up, please. I want to teach you this about life. Please and please. Do not be embarrassed when you find out you do not know everything. Are you hearing me? Do not, even if you are a celebrity, do not be embarrassed that you do not know everything. Every time I see our daddy come and sit down here, I am very humbled by his humility. Brothers and sisters, this is a professor. The brightest and the finest in his field. Yet, our daddy will come and sit down quietly and you see him jotting down. And a small boy like me, his son is just talking. It's like I'm talking to my father and he's writing. How many of us can have that humility? Are you hearing what I'm saying? You must admit that you are limited. No matter how prophetic you think you are. No matter how apostolic you think you are. Many times when I cry before God, I say, Lord, help this small boy. If you don't help me, I will make a lot of decisions that are foolish and stupid. That's how I cry before God. I'm not insulting myself. I know it's the truth. And I say, Lord, send your word. Send me the word of the Lord. How many of us here can admit that I am great, but I am limited? If I depend on my strength alone, I will mix intelligent and foolish decisions. If you depend on your ability to choose a wife, you will choose nonsense. 
if you depend on your ability to choose a job you may choose rubbish it may look nice but that is the road of partition if you choose where you want to stay by yourself you say i want to stay in lagos or abuja my tama or somewhere there somewhere peaceful i don't want some of you are already laughing but god is saying that's not my path for you you are saying i take authority over it You really think it would have been my desire to be doing ministry in Zaria? How about gentlemen? I know what God has put in me. Oh, it's not pride. He tried for me. I'm not where I should be, but I'm not where I used to be. You think I don't want to be in a place where my grace will be all not, where after a sermon, a man of God would drop a jeep somewhere and say, man of God, this is a little seal of your apostleship you think i will not want a place where they will buy suits and members will just come and build a house for me or buy me a private jet but you see listen it is not of him that willeth it is not of him that runneth if you cannot wait for god to direct you i'll never forget i was rejoicing the year we're about to prepare for koinonia to start i was so happy because i was saying lord my share my assignment now is over let me run and find something very useful and do let me go and open up a very big ministry somewhere and big business somewhere and let me just enjoy my life and then god summoned a meeting at once and when i went i almost fainted the day god told me those who were around my reaction it was like how about god how about god and I've come to a point where I don't give God. If God says stay in Zaria forever, I stay in Zaria forever. I honor great men of God like Apostle Johnson Suleiman. Look at the place. Look at the kind of anointing that man of God has. And look at where he is. Look at where his international headquarters is. There are some decisions people take. When you look, you know God spoke to them. The devil will never come and tell you that kind of decision. Even you, you know it's God that spoke. Praise the Lord. But there are many of us, we will never admit that we are limited. We like judging things. I want a, min a ministry that um, is this and that and that and that. And God is saying, this is not the part. He say, I want a healing ministry. God said, you are not called into a healing ministry. He say, but that's what is raining. That's, I want to chop too. God says, uh -uh. you are an evangelist. You will not have a church. He says, so how will I get the cars and the houses? God will say, you just preach. Say, Lord, I need a base for my ministry. There must be a church. You open a church and all the trouble in your life comes from that church. Say divine direction. Number two, if you want divine direction in your life, you must engage in the ministry of prayer. There is no direction without prayer. Please listen to me. Prayer is a mighty weapon that positions you for divine direction when you pray god directs you through certain ways these are subtopics under prayer now it is prayer that will open you up to any other way that god will lead you please take what i'm saying seriously it doesn't matter how else it is prayer that will open the door when you pray the first way god can direct you is through light from scripture Psalm 119 verse 105. Just write it. It's a lecture so that we don't have to go there. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hebrews chapter 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners. So God speaks in diverse manners. But in these last days, he has chosen to focus on speaking to us through his son hallelujah so god speaks to men how in diverse man manners but in these last days that his primary means of communication is through his son which is the word the word of god number two when you pray you will hear the voice of the spirit isaiah 30 verse 21 it says you shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way walk ye in it 
the direct voice of the spirit either audibly or speaking to you through your spirit man ah i wish i had time to walk this john 16 verse 13 also it says when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth guide you guide you the third way when you engage in prayer you will receive divine encounters dreams visions revelatory experiences there are lots of instances in scripture where god used divine encounters to bring revelations to people especially dreams and visions genesis 41 verse 1 to 7 we see that the prophetic destiny of egypt they were forewarned genesis 41 don't turn there just write it please verse 1 to 7 it was the pharaoh who had a dream about the period of plenty and the period of lack and it helped them to prepare in exodus chapter 3 verse 2 to 3 moses had an encounter that revealed to him his prophetic destiny as a deliverer it is one way god speaks and directs men first kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15 first kings chapter 3 from verse 4 to 15 after solomon loved the lord and he offered a thousand bond offerings the bible says god came to him in a dream and he received an impartation and god gave him certain revelations about the spirit of understanding that would be at work in him to rule israel in acts chapter 9 and acts chapter 10 they all record the conversion of paul remember it was a divine encounter paul had a vision where he saw jesus christ and then he became blind but even in his blindness the bible says he went to the house of judas and paul was praying while he was praying he saw um um who who's the ananias in a dream in a vision coming because that's what god told ananias he said brother saul he's in a house he prayed and behold he has seen you in a vision so you can see how encounters connected men to their prophetic destiny the fourth way god will give you divine direction and guidance in your life is through spiritual authorities fathers mentors deacons and elders as we have it in our various and then the aged ones too elderly people not just elders in church men who have had the advantage of age in their lives but my focus here is fatherhood and mentorship one great platform to receive spiritual direction you can be struggling over a thing for years and you meet a man and in five minutes he supplies wisdom to your life hallelujah wisdom to your life i'll never forget one of our boards of trustees i met him one time and we got talking and i was sharing with him about something and while i was talking to me it was a big mountain i was sharing and he was just looking at me and after i finished saying it he just laughed do this do this do that and that was the end of it it's amazing that what is a mountain to you somebody has been marching that mountain for many years hallelujah it's amazing that we go through challenges in our lives and you think it will overwhelm you i've shared it again and again even with the little opportunity that god has given for ministry and counseling when i talk to people they come with seemingly mountains of challenges and while they are talking i'm just looking at them and wondering is this it this is what you call a mountain and i just tell them do this do that and that's the end of it one of my great friends was struggling in ministry things were tied down honestly things were really really tied down and he came and met me he said man of god what is the way out what do i need to do this you know this there's no opening there's no door opening in ministry and i just told him this is what god is saying a b c x y z and that was how his ministry opened up in very strange ways a great man many of you know him it's called Bishop Bernard Jordan. He has a son called Manasseh Jordan. They are great prophets. But he used to, he used to keep a certain kind of hair. And it seemed like it, his ministry was not received. Because 
people doubted him because of the way he dressed, the way he looked, and the way he carried out his prophetic ministry. But genuine man of God, fabulously wonderful man of God. And one day, Mike Mudo called him and said, I want to have a meeting with you. He said, if you adjust A, B, C, D in your life, I think you will be an extremely great man of God. And he listened. And the moment he took those steps, brothers and sisters, it was another dimension. Wisdom. The last way that God can direct you is through the prophetic ministry. The prophetic ministry. Both the prophetic office and revelatory gifts of prophecy. I'll dwell here for two minutes and we'll pray. In 1 Samuel, write the scriptures. The encounter between Saul and Samuel was through the prophetic ministry. Direction came for his destiny through the prophetic ministry. 1 Samuel chapter 10 from verse 1 to 7. It was when Saul met the prophet that his life was altered forever. I'm not talking of all these prophet, prophet things that we have around. There are many people who say they are prophets. Let me tell you the truth. They are not prophets. They have revelatory gifts. The prophetic office has an anointing. You never meet a true prophet of God or one who is anointed to function in dimensions of the prophetic. It must not be called a prophet. It could be called an apostle like, like Apostle John C. Suleiman. Or it could even be called a pastor. But that he has that potent prophetic dimension. You will never meet him and your life will remain the same. I tell you the truth. In 2 Kings chapter 8 from verse 7 to 15. I want us to read that one. 2 Kings chapter 8. Guys, don't project it until I ask us to do so. So that our time is gone. I mean, this project this one now. 2 Kings 8 verse 7 to 15. Is the, an interesting story between prophet Elisha, the king of Syria called Ben-Hadad, and one boy called Hazael, who later became king. Let me show you how that God can speak over the prophetic destiny of a man and bring direction to your life through the prophetic. Let's read it very quickly. Elisha came to, ben, to Damascus and Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, saying, the man of God is come. Hit our next verse. And the king said unto Hazael, Hazael was his boy, like his servant. Take a present in thy hand. See why it's good not to go and meet a man of God empty-handed? And go meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord. So how do you inquire of the Lord? Through the ministry of the prophets too. Are you seeing that? Inquire of the Lord, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? I want to know so that I can put my house in order. Next verse, please. So Hazael went, hold on. Hazael never knew that he was going to encounter prophecy in his life. Hazael went to meet the man of God and took a present with him, even of every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels burden, and came and stood before him and said, Thy son ben Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover from this disease? Now watch this, verse 10. And Elisha said unto him, Go and say unto the man of God, Thou mayest certainly recover. He said, How be it? Let me tell you the truth. I'm just saying that so that the king will not kill you. The truth of the information is the king is going to die. How be it? The Lord has shown me that he shall surely die. Next verse. Watch this. I wish I had time. I would have acted the drama. And he settled his countenance. After speaking to him, the prophet just found his face and started crying. And Hazael said, what is wrong? The Bible says, he settled his countenance steadfastly until he was ashamed. And the man of God wept. Why did he weep? Next verse. And Hazael said, why weepeth my Lord? And he answered, because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds shall thou set on fire, and their young men will thou slay with the sword, and thou wilt dash their children and rip up their women with child. Prophecy revealing to a man the mistakes that he's going to make in his life. The next verse. And Hazael said, but what? Is thy servant a dog that he should do this great thing? 
And Elisha answered, The Lord has shown me that you are the king. I came as a boy, but by prophecy, God is showing that you will be king. But I'm telling you now, when you become king, correct your mistakes. This is what I'm seeing through prophecy. Correct it. You are going to be so carried away by royalty. You see how prophecy is powerful. And you can just look and say, you are going to marry... I'm joking, no. You are going to marry a man of God. But as you get married, I see that you can be very materialistic. Start praying about it. You see the power of prophecy revealing things to us in our lives. Or be careful. I see an expansion coming. But I see that pride can take over your life. That's God speaking. Instead of arguing and say, God, me, you go back and say, Lord, I align with prophecy. Second Kings 6 verse 25, down to the end, tells us about the famine in Samaria and how the word of the Lord came through a genuine prophetic ministry and in 24 hours it ended famine. Second Kings chapter 6 from verse 25 to the end. And then in Isaiah 38, we read about Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great man and he was sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet came and said, Put your house in order. Thus said the Lord, you shall surely die. And Isaiah turned his face to the wall and he started crying. He said, Oh Lord, remember. And the Lord sent the prophet to go back and tell him, I have added. Let me pause. Ah, let me pause and talk a bit. Just give me one minute to talk about this. Listen. Do you realize that it is important not just to hear what God said yesterday? But what he's saying now. Listen. God's plans does not change. His purposes does not change. Sorry. But his plans can change. Please I need you to say. To get this. I really wanted to discuss this thing extensively. But I apologize. God can plan that you take a flight to Lagos. But because of evil. He can decide that you go by road. So the destination you arrived. But the way to get there can change. Many of us tie ourselves down. God said this yesterday. And we never open ourselves to find out. Could it be that God is saying something else? We feel if you bend to something else that God is saying. It proves that you did not hear God. I'm showing you now in Isaiah 38. A true prophet came with a word from the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is very important. You are in business with a guy. You started the business. He was born again and he loved God. Now he has entered into armed robbery and witchcraft and occultism. But in the vision you saw, you saw that you are partners in progress. And now God has been speaking to you. Get out. Cut yourself away from that devilish association. You started ministry with a man. You were both genuine. But now he has dappled his hands into a lot of things. And you have already said we are both some friends and we are destiny helpers. But God is speaking currently. Sever yourself from that relationship. Listen, it's not enough to hear what God said yesterday. The word of the Lord can change to suit his purposes. He is still God. When he says, I am the Lord, I change it not. You better understand what he's saying. My purposes remain eternal. Listen, if God has destined that Tosin works in a prophetic ministry and she refuses to work in that prophetic ministry, God will not allow that position vacuum. He will raise another person. His plans changed, but his purposes remain eternal. Are you getting what I'm saying? Isaiah 38 tells us that. So that many of us do not die in Egypt. Was it not? Listen. Do you know it was hunger that took men to Egypt? That's a message on his own. Joseph, it was famine. When famine hit the whole world, hunger drove them to Egypt and they went and became slaves there. But now God was telling them, you people will go out of Egypt. They had been there. And they rejected the word of the Lord. When they came out to Egypt now, watch this. 
God told them, start moving. You are going to a, a promised land. But at a point, God told them, mark time. Is that true? Remain there while Moses goes up the mountain. For 40 days, there was no advancement and they got angry. They were waiting. They said, God gave us an instruction to move forward. Is it the same God now that will tell us to stay? Brothers and sisters, God who talks to you in the mountain is still God in the valley. You must learn to understand the current rhema that the word of God is saying concerning your life. This already is somebody's word this night. And then finally, prophet Agabus. In Acts chapter 11 from verse 27 to 30, that's the first time we see that prophets came into a city. So the ministry of prophets has been there long in the Bible. Not a prophet. Prophets. I wish we can just see that scripture. Acts chapter 11 from verse 27. Prophets came. Agabus prophesied famine that was coming. And the church prepared for the famine. And in these days came prophets, not one. Many prophets from Jerusalem to Antioch 28. And there stood one of them named Agabus. And he signified by the spirit that there should be great death, famine throughout the world. Which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar 29. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. Let's stop there. So we see that Agabus came and he gave a prophetic word. And it saved the destiny of a nation. The second time we hear about Agabus is in chapter 21, verse 10 to 11. Just write it. Where he entered and he saw Paul and he took Paul's girdle and tied himself. He said, whoever owns this girdle, this is how the nation of Israel, this is how the people of God in Jerusalem, they will hold you and tie you. Could it be that many of us have not been divinely directed because we have not tapped into all of these avenues. But I told you it starts with admitting that you are limited and you need help in your life. And then number two, you must engage in prayer. And we are going to pray. Our time for prayer has gone into the teaching, but then we will pray. We need to pray and cry. And all through this week, listen, never make any decision in your life you are not sure God is part of. Are you hearing me? Whether it's decision for relationship, decision for marriage, don't listen to people who speak carnally and say, just do it. No. There are different ways God directs you. But I want to know that God is involved with everything I'm doing in my life. Don't just get up and say, except Jesus is not Lord, I must marry December. Who ask you? Is that in the blueprint of God's purposes for your life? Or I must marry a white man. Any Nigerian that comes to me back to send that, it must be a white man. That is your desire. But is that the purpose of God for your life? I must settle down in Abuja. There are people who are in Abuja living like animals. Whereas they would have left there and quietly gone to a place of honor where God has directed and live like kings. Hallelujah. I must work with CBN. God is saying start with Government Girls Secondary School. Start from there. There's nothing funny about it. It's not an embarrassing thing. Is it not a school? God is saying start there. I want to teach you something. My younger brother, one month ago, he got a lecturing job. He'd be, he had been trusting God for that lecturing job for a while. And nothing seemed to be happening. You know, tried, tried, tried. They had kept him and he was getting frustrated. And one time we got talking and I said, look, young man, listen. You do the job. The job he was doing, he was teaching in one school. Guess his salary, 5,000 naira per month. And if you don't come to teach the students, they will still deduct something from it. I told him, remain there. He's teaching you discipline. He's teaching you submission. God is preparing you so that you will be honored when you become a lecturer. I told him the lecturing job will come. But wait for God's time. 
It's amazing how if you hear God, it will sponsor your being patient. You want to start a ministry, God is saying, there is no doubt that I called you, but wait. You say, but God, people have been telling me this thing is burning. God says, sit down there. Fire was burning, but it did not consume the bush, so it won't kill you. Let the fire keep burning. Say, God, I'm feeling like taking all the souls. God is saying, just stay. I want to teach you. Keep cleaning the chairs like Stephen. Keep working in welfare department. And you say, God, my anointing is, this, this department is, 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 is underutilizing my anointing. God said, you will do ministry and be tired. Just wait. I remember one lady many years ago, she used to disturb me about marriage. It was such a serious issue. It was a big deal to her. I want to marry, I want to marry. That was almost all her talk. And then she got married. And after just like six months or so, I called her one day and that joy, that, you know, that whole kinetic nature wasn't there again. I called her. Ah, what's wrong? I said, truly, if I knew her, I would have just taken my time and done. I said, are you serious? What about all of the things you said to me? All of the joy you want to raise your children a godly home? Where did it go? He said, it's still there, oh, but I, I found out that any time you spend in taking your time is worth it. I said, really? Wisdom from experience. Send. 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 The word that changes my life. Send. I have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets and my God did my life change. Tonight, let me tell you, if you can believe, this, he said, believe his prophets. I know you are a businessman. I know you are educated. I know you are smart. But there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper. They are solved from the realm of the spirit. It's only the result you receive here. Are we together now? Believe in his prophets so shall you prosper write this down please his prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you you must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from god to you and one of the ways that you can Help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. You have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man. What is so special about this man? Why should I believe him? Why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously? Every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God investigate the dealings of god study the track records of his results i think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that no give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing how do you believe his prophets Open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions. Don't just receive the grace alone. Instructions. Many times believers miss it because we miss instructions. Very subtle instructions. Sometimes very ego stinging instructions. Like you were seated here now and then I just said everybody shout Jesus. You know, I don't mean to embarrass your intelligence. You don't sit on a seat and shout Jesus. You've been singing a song before you came here. You, there was Jesus more than 10 times in that song. You kept shouting Jesus, Jesus, lover of my soul. And nothing happened. And here you are sitting and a man is saying, just shout Jesus once. If you don't have this revelation, you can sit down and say, please, what is, we are not children here. What is all this nonsense? He told Naaman, go to Jordan wash seven times. Naaman said, me? Jordan. There are clean rivers somewhere. 
and a small girl said, you are the one in trouble. If you don't go and wash, you can go back with your leprosy. Two scriptures and then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 31. and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians it says and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and also what his servant Moses God performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Look up, please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. That means I can talk to you without the cloud, but I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. He says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one? God does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the, the leftover of unbelief. Because you see, some of us are coming from different Christian experiences. Some of us have been, our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology, all kinds of philosophies. Some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of God, prophets and whatever. And chances are that when you come like this, usually you will just add the man of God to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them. And God says, not so. And he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in Mount Zion. Are we together? It's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your unbelief immediately. Readjust your unbelief while the devil is trying to lie to you. Can your life be changed all of a sudden? The, the power will touch the person near you. This somebody you shook hands with, turn to your neighbor and say this and that. So you know that the person, uh, the person can be acting. It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now 
I said, I am amazed at how people in Africa and Nigeria trivialize success. I am shocked at how people um, believe that success is about luck. It's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like, I think these people are just fortunate. Is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake. No. Including the testimony you are about to have. That gentleman from Ghana, he did not just press this thing and found my name. No, 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 no. The anointing that is sent with that word works day or night. Are we together now? There are many testimonies just like his, that gentleman. You see that now? Someone will tell you I was sitting and I had a dream. How about those who buy new phones, brand new phones, brand new phones, and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside? How do you explain that? A new phone. Not new, uh, what do they call that thing? Not new memory card. I'm not talking about new memory card. A new phone that you bought it, tear rubber, you are the one who opened it. Then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question. Who, who now, who, how do you explain that? Listen, listen. We live in a world that is not natural. It only manifests the spiritual naturally. The, 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 the earlier you got this, the better. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. All that you see in this world is only a reflection. Say reflection. The real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit. Whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory. Nothing happens that is physical. Are we together? One of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight, among the many miracles we desire is finance. Oh, Nigerians, finance. You want to talk a good news to any honest Nigerian right now, in this day and age, as we transit into the ember month, no matter, speak about their spiritual life, yes. Speak about their love for God, passion, new depths, but please don't ignore that other one. Just even if it's in passing, just say something about it. Finance. Many people want to see financial breakthrough. Many people are working and they are trusting God for breakthrough. And remember, the strange thing about finance, do you know why, listen, I'm not talking about money, we're going to pray shortly. Do you know why many believers are poor? Because in the kingdom, finance is warfare. Money is not just an instrument to live well, it's a weapon. See, listen. Oh dear, what's it? Ecclesiastes 7. Let me just talk a little. You was... Uh, I, I didn't plan to say this, but Ecclesiastes 7 verse 12. Let me show you something. May God give somebody deliverance right now. Read it, read it. One to read. For wisdom is a defense. Uh-huh. And money is a defense. Just stop there. So we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense. Now look up. When the Bible says you have a weapon, what is a weapon? Something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack. Is that true? If you give me a weapon, like a shield, I use it for defense. And the Bible says, one of the many weapons, money is one of them. And the Bible says, those weapons are not carnal. The word not carnal means they are not man-made. But my brother, my sister, this thing is man-made. It was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because this is man-made. But the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal. He said it is mighty through God. That means there is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means this thing is only the body. The same way a human being is called currency. Anything that moves is a living thing. And that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it. 
you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says, believe is prophet there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this This is what we chase all around because we think this is paper. No, this is not, this is paper, yes, but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit. This is what you need to understand. So the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hard working you are. You can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please, are you getting what I'm saying? If you can understand this alone, at least even if you don't know how it comes, you already know that it doesn't come by itself. These are the mysteries that surround our kingdom. You ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom? My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. This is a spiritual realm. You don't have to be a Christian to believe it. You just have to be alive. This is a spiritual realm. Animals know it. Plants know it's a spiritual realm. That's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it. You don't leave it open. You cover it. Because what happens there is none of your business. Now you just cover it and watch it happen. And it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down. A little seed. When you planted it, it had no roots. The Bible says, just like you do not know the way of the wind, nor how a woman, how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child, you know, and all of that, so also you don't know the way of God. The Lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities, listen, that are beyond the realm of the eyes. Are we together? Most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain. Unfortunately, in this kingdom, there are things that you may not be able to explain. When people come here to testify, you see me sit quietly and I watch. And many times I'm in shock as I watch the immutability of God's power in the lives of people. The same way you are going to come up here to testify. Yes, it's true. What suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say, we are sending you to US to get a job. Hapa, my brothers and my sisters, I've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who I need. Whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal. That you are sitting and someone says, I'm thinking of you. Who do you think you are? No. I want to help you. I want to bless you. You step into prepared blessings. Blessings that you are as sure. He said, Master, we have toiled all night. And Jesus looked at them. You know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net. Then you quickly pull it in the morning. That's how you were trained. But let me show you another technology. Cast your net to the right side. Master, but we only have left and right. <clears throat> this one is not brain work now. This one is not one plus one. I told you one plus one plus God is equal to whatever he says the answer should be. 
one plus one is two but one plus one plus god is not equal to two it's not even equal to ten thousand is equal to any answer that god puts there so one plus one can be equal infinity god said so are we together now i'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all. When you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today, you should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters, I present to you this same God who can change your life, who will change your life. I'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others. Wow, this is how God has changed this lady's life. Wow, we are soon going to pray. You must have a desperation and say, Lord, I didn't come tonight to clap for anybody. I left my journey wherever. Lord, I know that you will visit me. And I hold on to the horns of the altar. While you are sitting, the devil is telling you, remember tomorrow by 12, your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer i believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute I want you to just mention everything you are trusting God to do tonight. Go ahead. Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Don't believe as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. Keep praying. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Oh 
Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around. Something has happened. The signs and wonders are no more like before. The revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before. I'm here for a turnaround, oh God. My prayer life has died. I'm here for a reawakening. I no longer fast. I no longer pray. I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. now listen this is why he anointed me. Because there is an agenda. But that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart. It takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart. To proclaim liberty. Now I like this one. To proclaim. To declare that the time has come for you to walk free. It says, and the opening of prison. My brothers and my sisters, there can be men physically walking, but they are in prison. Next verse. Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state. No. So anything in your family Make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service. Don't just stand alone to receive. I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed, you are not free. You are not free at all. If you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken, you are still not free. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus Christ. 
Let me give us one last prayer point. Father, every desire I brought here tonight, I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakatosh. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barateke Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed, let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. I command speed, receive it, it's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone, it's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years, in one month, receive that grace. I energize your spirit, man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, 
when speed comes upon your academics i'm praying again the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed i release that grace let that anointing come upon you speed speed in the name of jesus christ speed now now listen fire in the spirit has many significance fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct so you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of jesus i'm stretching my hands right now spirit of the lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of jesus i declare that any operation that is not of god at the count of three by the mystery of the holy ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire
I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken chains be broken spirit of victory cover us with your wings Madam, please clear the way for me. These women, tap these women for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give you a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. It's leaving my hands and it's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother in the name of Jesus Christ. You will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? My CV. Your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me... Okay. 
sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter congratulations. Listen, and I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace. You must testify. I declare whatever it will translate to, whether a job, whether increase, whether promotion, I command it, I declare it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus, I command it, I decree it, I declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hold the hands of this lady, this one. Hold the hands of this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise. I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds onto that family, I command that it's gone now. In the name of Jesus, it is gone. I curse the power of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this, but in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. Whatever it is you are involved in, God is about to bring grace upon it. I stretch my hands right now at the count of three. May the fire of God come through your hands into your life. Lord, I pray. In the name of Jesus, whatever has not been working in your life, I force it to work right now. Receive that anointing. I force it to work now. Inside, outside, I force it to work now. Those following online, I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing. I declare the blessing. I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand. I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is. I'm seeing fire, still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in, this, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is ex specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that fail must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus i change it now in the name of jesus listen a man's destiny can be exchanged it's true have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. And you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life. Of your, is your dad? Where did he come from? From high there. From high there. From high there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father... In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare. In the name of Jesus anyone who has exchanged your destiny sir i decree and declare a restoration now you are the daughter hold my hands i pray for you look at me you are a wonderful lady huh but bad things continue to happen in your life huh you are a nice lady are you married i'm married well with that one. don't worry i know why i'm saying you get what i'm saying now yes, sir. because what i'm seeing this is a spirit 
you are a nice lady but people continue to misunderstand you yes, sir. Yes, good sir. things and people look at you in the eye of many people now you are you are a devil you are a terrible lady yes, but it's sir. not true yes. you have a very beautiful heart this is what happens when do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people a ministry can be under this captivity no matter the bible said don't let your good be evil spoken of you can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you you bought something for them and they end up you are saying what is this i pray for you and the person says so you are trying to say i'm the one who is not spiritual it's a spirit my dear i want to pray for you huh? this thing is not just about your marriage that is you know things have gone wrong you're a wonderful lady Huh? favor will come close to you but then never enter your life yes, sir. what yes, do you sir. do i'm working in a security uh, you are a security yes sir. did you go to school yes sir. i'm running my master you are running your masters yes, sir. my dear do you believe god can change your life yes, now sir. i believe sir hold my hands to appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying do this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen. I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as her father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny. I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job. That on Sunday you're on your way going to church, your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man if you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again, in the name of Jesus, may my God relocate someone here by the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we're going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat 
on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the spirit. There are some of you. It's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies. And see Nigerians. They want to go abroad by fire by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you. Greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that seemed right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send it. You can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside will walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, Walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it. And ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in your PR department, you can join them. And then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request 
um, is obtained, please, for those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. the name of Jesus we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing Pastor Jax Ejimi there um, Pastor Alpha Benga Overflow 1 Pastor Femi Promise Overflow 2 please quickly quickly let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you. Just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now.
lifting, shackles are breaking, heaven touches earth in this place.
in one minute those following from any nation of the world i like you to just pray we're just going to pray and speak over this go ahead stretch your hands we're praying on this request father let your people return with testimonies Ashala gata brada gata baraka to sada brada gadech in the cross asia sahasa baraka to shabrada gata balada ba rakata branda gata balada bush ebratos kada brandi giri balada bush father in the name of jesus christ let impossible situations be turned around by the spirit of god le kato shata prate kato sabrade gade ba rakata parata parato sada prate gade balada ba in the name of jesus father we thank you lord it is before you these prayers are laid out father we give you praise thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name that you will do thank you for prayers thank you for answers thank you for praises thank you for testimonies that are bound father we give you praise for there's nothing impossible with you we give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable lord you will bend things tonight in the name of jesus Amen. you will change things tonight in the name of jesus Amen. you will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit Amen. you bring healings you bring deliverance you will bring breakthrough financial breakthroughs in the name of jesus you bring changes lord death supernatural deaths we cancel by the power of your spirit lord we give you praise we give you glory Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus, every request here 
in the name of Jesus the son of the living God we turn it into testimonies and let some of them begin to manifest from this night in the name of Jesus Christ let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month you will you will almost not have any request to write in the name of Jesus Christ our time is gone but I want you to lift your hands I want to speak over your life now apostle why do we do this all the time because this is how you program the destinies of people these words you see they are not just languages it's not just the speaking you know I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the Bible says he sent a word to Jacob not he spoke he sent a word to Jacob and it lighted upon Israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of Jesus I decree and I declare that this month of September you are entering let it be called your season of strange results let it be called your season of strange results anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life in the name of Jesus may God use your life to prove a point I decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to men may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season If you're a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth are we together now and in the name of Jesus I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you had the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ 
both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the lord see to which that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of jesus christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of god that means if god does not step in for you you know you are in trouble i stand by the gift of prophecy and i decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of jesus christ every attack on your destiny i decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in jesus name whoever has been destined by god to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of jesus i declare i call them by the spirit and i command that they locate you believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you i say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family i declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of jesus christ that when men say there is a casting down i welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last. I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Any door that was once open and is now closed, I reopen it in Jesus name. I hope you believe everything I'm saying. Please believe it with all your heart. I pray for every student here. I don't know what challenge you may be having. Or I don't know what you are trusting God for. In the name of Jesus, I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them. I don't care what needs to be done. Let it be done to move you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it again. Let it be done to move you. There are some of our young ones that just wrote post ume in the name of jesus there are some of you who the results you have seen now from that result you will not get anything serious i change that result now i change that result now i change that result now believe it you are too young to walk in unbelief i change that result now anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no but enter it i say it again if that vehicle is doomed for accident then i take you out of it 
but in the name of Jesus if you enter it then it must not crash especially for you my dear brothers it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of Jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the Lord I command your establishment now from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching